OCN, Word of God to the World. Well, hello, hello, hello. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> I am so excited for you today. Praising Jesus, giving Jesus glory and all the honor, all the accolades, all the praises, all the worship. It all belongs to him. Hallelujah. I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford, and this is The Authentic Word. The Word of God is the authentic Word. Hallelujah. We just give him all the praise for his amazing Word. Wow, he's so powerful. He, he's so wonderful. He's just been doing miracles after miracle after miracles. The, my prayer team and I, we've been praying for people for, that have all kinds of sickness and illnesses, and God just been healing them instantly. Uh, I received a testimony from a man who had been reading my book, and he said, the church that makes the difference, he said he was in a lot of pain, he had diverticulitis and some other uh, disorders, and he said he started reading my book and the pain started going away. This is the Holy Ghost's book. I tell you, he ministered to you, into you as you read his word. Wow, the Word of God is so powerful. Wow, there's nothing that the Word of God cannot do. I ministered to a group of women last week, and they received miracle healings of cancer. It was all kinds of cancer. It's like four or five different women that had cancer, and they all got healed because of faith, because you, when you trust Him, when you believe in Him, and you pray by faith, you will receive what whatsoever you said. Hallelujah. And his word says that. Amen. Amen. But today, God wants to talk to us about something else, too, that's so amazing. We're still on understanding who we are in Jesus, who we are when we have the Holy Spirit power working in us and living in us. When we allow ourselves to mature and grow and overcome those things which he says that we have to overcome in order for us to inherit all things. So I'm going to pray and we're going to jump right into the word of God, this amazing word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, the matchless power, mightyful name of Jesus, the healing name. There's healing in, in your son's name, Jesus. It's, everything is in Jesus. Deliverance is in your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Goodness and mercy is in your name, Jesus. So we just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Father, for the price that Jesus paid to do all things. He did everything. He, he, it was a divine setup. Hey, yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Praise your Lord. And so you are a part of that divine setup. And the more you understand that when you read this book, The Church That Makes the Difference. I know you've seen it on the beginning of the program. And so I just praise God that the Holy Spirit had a special message that he wanted to give to his church, that he wanted to give to the nations, that he wanted to give uh, to people all over this world. Hallelujah. And so I just happened to be one of the vessels that, that he chose to write this on this particular subject. So I just thank God for that. And that I wanted to bless you. You can write to OCN or you can write to the address that's being shown right now to get your copy of this book. It's $10. But if you don't have the $10, write and ask for it anyway. <laughs> Amen. 
because we just all we want to do is be a blessing. All we want to do is get you in your rightful position as a son or daughter of God, as a son or daughter of the kingdom of God. So hallelujah. So Father God, I just thank you for this privilege again. And so we just ask you to open up spiritual eyes and our revelation, wisdom, and understanding of your word upon today and who we are in you and how we are and what a blessing that you have caused everything to work together for good, even when it's not supposed to, Father. You said you're going to make it work for our good and for your glory. And so we just praise you and we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. So let's go to, we were talking about our identity, and I was speaking on who are you, where is your heart at, you know, where are you really in your spirit and in your heart concerning who you are and your understanding of that, of who you are. So let's go to Exodus 19, chapter 19 of Exodus, and we're going to start in verse 5. And in verse 5 it says this, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Look at that. Already. And we kind of hit on that a little bit, uh, maybe a few messages ago, and uh, that we're peculiar people, that we are holy people, we are a holy nation. And it's in the old and the new. It's in the New Testament and it's in the Old Testament. God has not changed our identity. Our identity is the same from the beginning, from the foundations of the earth. I'm going to show you that. He said he created us to be his family so that he could share all of who he is and all of his wealth. He just didn't come to save you from your sins, just to deliver you out of your bondage and your poverty, which he did, because that's what he does, because he's, he's a loving God. He loves us so much, he said, I got to come back down and I got to do it. I have to take care of the mistake that Adam made. And so in all of his love and all of his mercy and all of his grace for us, that's what he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, you're a peculiar people treasure, treasure, we're God's treasure, we're his most valuable treasure, <laughs> wow, wow, most valuable treasure, oh glory, unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, see, everything on the earth belongs to him, so that includes you and I, even those who haven't got born again yet. He's just waiting for them to come to him. He's just waiting for them to give up their own way of doing things and get into his holy word to find out how to do it. And that's why our identity is tied in with all of that. That's why you have the Holy Spirit, so that you can be just like Jesus so that that love that's in Jesus, that love comes to live on the inside of you and you are in perfect love. And that perfect love brings you what? Perfect peace. When you have perfect peace, you have no fear, you have no doubt, you have no hesitation, none of that. And I'm going to show that to you in the word that that is your true identity. No fear, no doubt, but you are walking in love. You're walking in faith. You're walking in authority. You're walking in power. You, you, you have all of the, the, the characteristics of holiness. That, when you receive the Holy Spirit, those characteristics of holiness are in you. So you've got already what you need in you to make you exactly like him. But what does he do? He gives it to us as a free gift. And he says, you're righteous. You're righteous when you believe him in faith. 
that you have received that free gift, that you can operate in that free gift? He said, don't you know I count that as righteousness? When you operate in faith and operate in your true identity of who you are, you're full of love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, faith, self-control, discipline. You can do it. Why? Because you have the ability living on the inside of you. That ability is the Holy Ghost. That ability is the Holy Spirit. That ability is supernatural substance. Hey, hallelujah. That ability is the power to get it done. That's the power to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. In other words, you've got different characteristics now. You're not mixed with good and evil. You no longer want to be like that. You want to be just like Jesus, full of love, patience, and peace. And so he said, and so you are mine. You belong to me, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. There we go again. He's telling us we're holy and that we're his holy nation. Anybody who gets born again is his holy nation. Wherever you were born at, wherever you were born again at, say you were born in one nation, but you got born again in another nation. You might have moved. You might have moved out of the country. Many people do that, you know. They move out of their own country and move to the United States, move to Canada, Mexico, wherever you came from. But he's talking spiritually even here in the Old Testament. He's just not talking in the natural, in the flesh, in your natural flesh, because see, now when you get born again, you are now a spirit being. You're not just a human being. You are, are a spirit being with the spirit of the Holy Spirit living in you, the God nature, the holy nature of God. Woo! Hallelujah. So there it is. And what did he tell us in Revelations 1, 6? That we are kings and priests unto our Lord. So we're a holy nation. So here it is in the Old Testament. And here it is in the New. Okay, so now let's move on. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. Praise God. So, you know, people say, well, what's in the New Testament? It's not in the Old Testament. I've already proved you wrong on that. <laughs> Everything that is in the New Testament came out of the Old Testament. Don't you know that the Lord, the Almighty Jehovah, Yah, he was who... It's in the new. Didn't he say to tell the Israelites, I am he, I am that? And what did he tell? What did he tell the Romans when they were getting ready to take him to court? And they wanted to crucify him. That was a plan and a design designed by him and the Father on purpose. <laughs> Divine setup. A supernatural divine setup. Don't you know that you are a part of a supernatural divine setup? By the Lord God Almighty, who was in the old and who was talked about and prophesied for the new. Hallelujah. He said, I am he. What did he? He said, Well, who are you? You the king of the Jews? I am he. And so who was he here? He was the Lord God. He was the mighty God. He was Jehovah. He was Hashem. And, and who is he? The same person. The same Godhead person. The Father and the Holy Spirit. He's one. There's three persons in the one. Why do you think we sing songs about the Trinity? Hallelujah. Three persons in one. And so that's, he wanted us to be one with him, just like he's one with the Father. And that's why he came and died and paid the price, so we could be one with him and the Father. So what, how many persons does that make? Well, that's you, that's him, and that's the, uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So that's three persons again. Because those three persons live on the inside of you. You can't separate Jesus. <laughs> 
you cannot. You cannot separate him from the Father, and you cannot separate him from his Holy Spirit, his precious Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So let's go to 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse, well, let's look at verse 4. And in verse 4, 1 John 4, he said, you are of God. Hello? You are of God. You are the God kind. You have the God DNA now lives in you. How? By receiving Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, your King, your provider, your shield, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Je your peace. Everything that you need, everything that you want is in him. And he said, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's why he says that. Because the great one lives on the inside of you, being a son of God. You are the temple of God. He said, that's your reasonable sacrifice. You're holy and acceptable, good. And he said, I want you to have not only the good, not only the acceptable, but the perfect. Do you know you are designed already? You have everything in you already for you to be perfect. And the body of Christ says, oh, you can't be perfect. You're just human. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You are not just human. You are a spirit being now in a human body in the image of God, which is what you were in the beginning in the garden. And when God first created Adam and Eve with his own mouth, with his own hands, and he breathed the Holy, his spirit of himself into them. How? Oh, my word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't you know how amazing and wonderful and miraculous that is? He wasn't the only one that had immaculate conception. <laughs> Don't you know that C is already a person and that you already existed? And he made a decision when the timing was when you were going to be birthed in this earth and some of us died prematurely before we got a chance to find all that out. That we are of the God kind. We are the God DNA. And that's why Satan, that's why Luce, the devil hates us so much. Because all we do is to remind him constantly how defeated he is, how he'll never get to have a relationship with the Lord God anymore, but he didn't want one because he wanted to be God himself. And so when people reject Jesus, when they reject his word, when they reject who he say you are, that means that the love of God is not in them. And so, what did he say? He said, but you've overcome, and you're greater. Greater is he that's in you. Meaning the Holy Spirit that's in you, that's greater than anything. That is the greatest power. That is the greatest anointing. That is the greatest ability to get everything done. There's nothing that you would not be able to do. When you allow the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, to be the leader of your life, to be the Lord of your life. That's what Lord means. It means your owner. You belong to him. And so he said, because you were willing to give yourself back to me, I created you and made you. I brought you into existence. But because you were willing to say, look, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I accept everything Jesus did for me. I accept the price he paid for me to get me back in my rightful position, my rightful love, full of love. That's what God, if you want to give just one definition of who God is, but that word is love. Isn't that right here in 1 John chapter 4? God is love. And he says, so that powerful love lives in you. Love is powerful. Love changes things. Love causes good things to happen. Love heals people. Love delivers people. 
Love helps people. Love gives people wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's the love of God. He said we are to be perfected. We are to be perfect. And he said we are because my love is in you. He said, so I count that as righteousness. He said, when you trust me and when you walk in faith, he said, walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. You're the part of being the just person. You're the person that everybody's going to run to and want you to pray for them, want you to help deliver them, give you counsel. Give them the word of God. The word of God is so powerful to do anything. There are many people who are getting healed right now. Hey, in the name of Jesus, right now, I see many, I see a group of people. They're watching this program, the authentic word, and they're feeling the power of God coming down on them, and they're getting healed of all forms of diseases. I see crippled people starting to walk. I see people with all kinds of tumors and stuff on their arms. I see people, they're going away immediately. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's the power of the ability of the Holy Spirit. He can go anywhere. He's all over the place. And not only is he in you, but he's waiting for someone else for him to make them, make him their home. He said, if you uh, let me abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So uh, you've got your healing right now. So allow him to come in and to receive him and let him abide in you, let him live in you, let him lead you, let him guide you, let him show you which way to go. Hallelujah. So he said, so that is why, he said, and they are where my oath. So, so you're greater than what's in this world, meaning the satanic forces, meaning demonic spirits, meaning all kinds of other sorceries and witchcraft and all. Don't you know you're more powerful than that? You're more powerful than Satan and his demons. And if you knew that, he, 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 he would stop laughing at you and you tell him what to do. He has to do it. Because you have Jesus. And when he sees Jesus manifesting himself out through you, he's afraid. He will go and do what you say. And when you cast him out and you tell him to go, he has to do it. He has to obey because you're the greater power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, God. So there's one more scripture I want us to look at real quickly, real quickly. And it's 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And verses 9, we're going to start at 9. I wish I could read all the other, but because of time constraints. And it says here, okay, and we know Jesus, he says, so be, well, be therefore ashamed, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be ye partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Because sometimes we're going to get afflicted because we walk in the power of God. And, you know, and so a person who's not born again, they don't like that spirit. They don't want you to have that power. They don't want you to exercise no power or authority over them. And so he says, uh, the power of God. In verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, his own purpose and plan for you and grace, woo, hallelujah, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. So you come alive again. That life that you had in you in the garden, you become alive again. And so on that note, see, so we've got a holy calling. So that tells you right there, you're holy, and that's and that holiness causes you to be perfect. Why? Because your perfection is in love. Love is perfect. And so we see that in 1 John chapter 4. And it said, all fear, love cast out fear. So you'll know when you're perfect because you'll just be full of love. 
That's all you'll be full of. That's how you're perfect, because of the love. And so I just want to have you just check those scriptures out later on today when you get a chance and know that God is here for you. When you call on his name, he will answer. He is a God of amazing love, and that's who you are, full of his love. And don't forget the book, The Church That Makes the Difference. You are that church that makes the difference. You are the walking, talking kingdom of God, that power of God. And so I just thank you for joining us and being on the program, tuning in. Don't forget to write for the book on the address that was shown below, or you can write to OCN. They will be happy to send it to you as well. And so I just want to pray. I, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just release blessings upon all the people who are watching and hearing your voice minister your powerful word. God bless you. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. I'll see you again. Shalom, shalom.